Hello everybody, Antas Ravak King here with Joseph Vice Farrell. And we are going to be reacting to Ganondorf vs. Dracula Death Battle. Sure I might have done this on my own, but I felt it wasn't right doing it by myself. So I decided to actually invite a friend over right here. My friend Joseph Zeno, alias Joseph the Vice Pharaoh. So, without further ado, let's get started. Three, two, one, go. Fame may be fleeting and wealth ephemeral, but true evil never dies. It just comes back with a goddamn second health bar. Ganondorf, the calamitous demon king of Princess Zelda's Hyrule. And Dracula, the everlasting vampire lord of Castlevania. He's whiz and I'm boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. <sighs> Millennia ago, in an age long past, the demon king Demise threatened to pull the world into blood and war. Until he got his ass slapped by this pointy-eared boy in green. Undaunted by being you know, murdered, Demise cursed the blood of the goddess and the spirit of the hero to be forever haunted by his wrath made flesh. That curse became Ganondorf Dragmire. Good old Dorf was born to the Gerudo tribe of the desert. Thing is, the Gerudo were all ladies and Ganondorf was the first male born in a hundred years, which automatically made him their king. Because reasons, I guess? Wait, wait, so he gets to be in charge and has the best odds on Tinder? That's my dream come true! Who could want more? Ganondorf could. Jealous of the neighboring kingdom of Hyrule's verdant fields, clean water, and not being a godforsaken desert, he dreamed of a better world for his people. Or, you know, just for himself. Being the reincarnation of ultimate evil means you're probably kind of a selfish douche. And surprisingly, his vile ambitions would be rewarded. Turns out, he was also preternaturally adept at magic as befits an education from his caretakers, the witches Kaume and Kotake. Quinrova. From them, Dorf learned to pitch balls of electricity, summon lightning, move objects with telekinesis, levitate, form barriers, and control minds. When he wishes to fight from a distance, he can create phantom horsemen or puppets of himself to battle as his proxies. Or if he wants to get personal, he can use his dark magic to enhance his physical strengths, making him a badass in all ranges. He's a master with a blade, sometimes two, and sometimes on horseback. And sometimes two swords on two horsebacks? Oh, let's not get crazy. He was just a man, after all, though not for long. With his magical training complete, Ganondorf put his greatest skill to the test, his raw cunning. By manipulating the rulers of Hyrule and its neighboring domains, as well as a curiously familiar boy in green. Hey, what do you know? Weird coincidence. Ganondorf gained entry to an alternate dimension called the Sacred Realm. Within it lay the Triforce, a magical artifact left by the gods said to grant the wish of whomever touches it. The perfect solution to all your world-conquering needs. Except once Ganondorf got his hands on those golden Doritos, two of them jumped ship. See, only someone with a perfect balance of courage, wisdom, and power can wield the complete Triforce. If someone with an imbalance between those three virtues touches it, it splits. In this case, the pieces of wisdom and courage went to Ganondorf's enemies, Princess Zelda and the hero Link. Ah, uh, that's embarrassing, but he did get to keep the Triforce of power, because who needs the courage and wisdom shit when you can just blow stuff up? So I live. Even on its own, the Triforce of Power radically improved Ganondorf's strength and magical prowess, while also elevating him from a mere warlock to the Demon King he was always meant to be. Literally, he could turn into a big blue pig monster! The Dark Beast, known simply as Ganon, is a nearly unstoppable terror, gaining even greater strength without sacrificing any of his intellect. As a bacon wizard, he can evaporate <laughs> foes with fireballs, bacon turn wizard. invisible, teleport, summon darkness, and even distort the space around him. Despite all that power and even successfully ruling Hyrule for seven years, Ganondorf was soundly defeated and sealed within the Sacred Realm. There he remained, trapped outside the spaces of reality, a prisoner to the void between space and time, never to return ever, ever again. <laughs> uh, sorry, sorry. I couldn't keep a straight face. Yeah, no, he got out like the next day. 
So nothing holds Ganon back for long, and he's insanely tough to kill. In fact, thanks to his part of the Triforce, he's almost indestructible. While most weapons can technically harm him, it usually takes a holy weapon like the Master Sword or Light Arrows to put him down. He once survived being crushed within his own castle, which, based on its size and composition here, and accounting for the hollowed out interior, should weigh over 11,000 tons. Even better, he later withstood a different castle exploding around him. Wow, some of this guy in castle. By measuring the size of the in-game castle model and assuming violent fragmentation, we can determine it was a blast worth almost two kilotons of TNT, a yield comparable to early atomic bombs. <laughs> and even though holy weapons can bypass his defenses, he still survived being stabbed in the face with the Master Sword. You know, the literal blade of evil's bane. Or like when he was impaled through the chest by one of the sages after he was supposedly sealed away. He just yanked that shit right out and murdered the best sage that did it to him. Uh, heads up, Wiz, you ever stabbed me again and that's what's happening to you. Reference to Aquaman versus well, Namor. Well, Ganondorf isn't just tough. He's powerful enough to punch shockwaves, tear up an island, and block out the sky with his magical malice. Plus, he can keep up with Link. He's even killed him in one timeline. And this fairy boy can dodge Bemos lasers. By the way, the Ocarina of Time game actually splits into three time, two timelines, and, well, one timeline splits into another two timelines, making their three timelines. In the Downfall timeline, Ganondorf triumphs against Link. In the Child timeline, where Ganondorf is busted before he could even commit his vicious deeds, and then there's the adult timeline, where he's sealed, and then Wind Waker soon follows. Back to the death battle, however. Which are literal lasers. They move in a straight line, burn instead of exploding, and according to the game's guidebook, are called lasers. So they should move at light speed. Based on the distance Link moved relative to this beam, we can estimate his own reaction speed to be about 11% the speed of light. Too bad old Dorf Lundgren doesn't get to hold on to Hyrule for too long. Still, you can stab and seal him away all you want. This big pork bastard will always be back to bring about your crispy demise. <laughs> In the world of Castlevania, the universe is governed by two opposing forces, order and chaos. Hey, it's like you and me, Wiz. No, I mean literally. As legend goes, for God to be good, there must be an equal force of evil to create balance. An evil found in an alternate dimension called the Chaotic Realm. This is Chaos. But to keep his spot in the balance on Earth, Chaos needed to choose a Dark Lord to represent him. A Dark Messiah, if you will. As luck would have it, a perfect candidate would end up choosing him. In the 11th century, Matthias Kronkfeest was the strategic mastermind behind a company of knights, alongside fellow commander and best friend, Leon Belmont. But, as with most bromances, it got screwed up by a homance. Homestick, have some tact. His wife died from a horrible illness. Was it third wheeling? I'm sorry, Wiz, but you can already tell this guy is evil because his name is Math. I mean, I know we use Math Matthias. all the time to do this show, but sometimes one must embrace the darkness to see the light. That right. is deep. Anyway, Matthias' grief was so intense, he swore vengeance on God himself. To achieve his vengeance, Matthias sought the powers of God's polar opposite, chaos. So he set up an easy six-step plan. Uh, step one, pick up a red rug called the Crimson Stone. It'll be important later. Step two, force death itself to become your personal secretary. Step three, kill Luigi. Step four, convince a vampire named Walter either. to kill Leon's fiance. <laughs> Quite obvious. Misery loves company. Step five, let Leon murder poor Walt and have death shove his soul into that red rug. Step six, congratulations, you are now a vampire. Got kids, I hope you are paying attention. From that day forth, Matthias rejected his humanity. He became a vampire, and much more. He was the Dark Lord, Dracula. My there have been a lot of different versions of Dracula over the years, but this one isn't your run-of-the-mill no, no. type. No, just, no. This that Dracula one is, is the much. avatar of chaos on Earth, the opposite to God. So, like, the devil. He, he's basically the devil. He 
or and Void in Kirby Star Allies. Though, as his former mm. friend Leon swore revenge, a vow which would carry on throughout generations. But good luck taking down this all new and improved vampire. Sometimes Lord. Rose and He's Pokemon Shield are sore. Vampire loadout like blood sucking, flag razor shark claws, telekinesis, and even trip and fall teleportation. He can also exert his influence over all living things, whether it be mind control, body possession, or absorbing the souls and abilities of fallen enemies through his power of dominance. Ugh, oh, like Kirby! A demonic monster Kirby. Right, Kirby. Also, Dracula can shapeshift to his black heart's desire, like into a swarm of bats, a cloud of mist, and a wolf. Oh, I get it. The opposite to God, because he's a dog just like the way Alucard is Dracula backwards. God, I should do science. He's also a master sorcerer, able to summon fireballs, meteors, and acid blood rain from the sky. Dark Inferno is a huge ball of magma that will fry anything in its path, and he can revitalize himself with another's life energy via soul steel. Then there's his most powerful attack, a localized nuke of holy magic, the Demonic Megiddo! With all these powers, it's no wonder Europe trembled at his presence for centuries, though perhaps their fears were unfounded. Yeah, despite being living chaos or whatever, Dracula was sometimes a pretty chill guy. He even got himself married and had a kid. Then again, kids Alucard, are also by the, the embodiment of chaos. Sadly, the people of a nearby church grew suspect of his wife, accusing her of witchcraft. So they burned her at the stake, and Dracula swore vengeance upon the god they followed as... Wait, 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 wait. Did he just get a total repeat of his backstory? Man, this guy can't catch a break. He was even forced to battle multiple descendants of Belmont, many of whom would actually defeat him. Well, sort of. Turns out Dracula is a much tougher vampire to kill than lame old Walter. Even after losing his entire body, Dracula's soul remained tethered to chaos. Thus, he would be resurrected every 100 years. When he wants to go all out, he Another can draw from the that power of the chaotic realm and transform into Ooh. one of many awesome monsters. Years. Like a giant oh. demon, a giant demon bird, a giant demon head, and a giant demon head in a painting that vomits out bats. Dracula okay, that's hard putting a tarnish. Move quick enough to catch that's putting a tarnish to my name. Work the fabric of reality itself. He's dumb enough to survive a lightning strike, get blasted by an enormous meteor, and even get crushed under the weight of his fortress, aka the Castlevania. By measuring the size of Castlevania on the game's official art, we know it should weigh around two million tons. Even then, Dracula has regenerated his body Four from decapitation pounds, by the way. of blood and <laughs> even full-on disintegration. So how the hell does he keep getting killed by everyone from Discount Conan to the Ghost of Weeb's past? Naturally, with the help of holy weapons, which Dracula is certainly not a fan of. Also, even when he's turned his body into some misty vape clouds, he keeps his head vulnerable. Because video games. Or more precisely, his hubris. Dracula's blatant arrogance would lead to his ultimate downfall, allowing his enemies to sever his connection to the chaotic realm and thus end his cycle of resurrections. So instead, he was reincarnated into a white-haired anime boy with the power of friendship, Soma Cruz, who turned out to be just as powerful as Dracula Classic, like when he touched beams of light or when he defeated chaos itself. Dracula's influence and power would never truly end. Even 10,000 years into the future, his bloodline continues to strike terror into the hearts of men. As long as good and evil exist... Hold up! That's his kid? What the hell happened to him? Ahem, no ordinary man can stand up to the incredible force that is the Dark Lord Dracula. Behold my true form is Alright, the combatants are set, and we've run the data through all possibilities. But first, all this chunk of pigs and bacon has made me hungry for Blue Apron! We're skipping that shit. Uh, Time for a death battle, everybody. You all know the outcome, but we're going to watch it anyway for shits and giggles, just to entertain you guys. <laughs> Your castle is lost, vampire. 
No man can challenge my power. But what is a man? A miserable pile of secrets. This is where he usually says that enough talk have at you, but he was cut off. I know me a man! The damn was blah! Ah. I have enough! How I die. Yay! Fatality. Well, it's all Hallows Eve themed, so it's natural that he drank his fluids in front of me. Eh. show similar reaction speeds, with only a small percent difference when compared to the speed of light. They were both brilliant schemers who have perfectly manipulated many intelligent foes, and their standard magical arsenals seem pretty comparable overall. But Dracula did have a leg up with a few extra magic powers that Ganondorf just didn't have. Like how he could rip out his soul in a bunch of different ways. That's something Ganondorf never really had to guard against before. Also, remember how Ganondorf survived an explosion worth about two kilotons of TNT? An admirable feat to be sure, but let's look at that meteor strike Dracula survived. Based on its size, composition, and speed of ablation, it must have struck with an energy equivalent to two megatons of TNT, 1,000 times greater than Ganondorf's proven durability. But hey, I know what you're thinking. What about that sage sword Ganondorf had? Shouldn't he have had an easy time killing Drax since it's a holy weapon? 
In some circumstances, sure, running this fight over and over a hundred times, Ganondorf would certainly score a few victories. But when considering Dracula's absurd regenerative abilities, it would take more than just a few hits from a holy weapon to finish him off. Not to mention, Dracula also wielded a holy weapon that took advantage of Ganondorf's weakness in the form of Demonic Megiddo. Yeah, I know it's called Demonic, so it seems weird, but it is explicitly described to be holy magic. And dropping a holy new gun, Ganondorf was a way more powerful victory move than trying to hit Dracula with a sword. And that's really what this came down to, power. Despite literally wielding the Triforce of Power, Ganondorf's potential paled in comparison to the energy Dracula drew from Chaos. Let's put this in perspective. The Triforce of Power comes from the goddess Din, who made the Earth. While we don't know the exact amount of power Din put in this piece, let's just eyeball it and directly compare it to her. So the energy attributed to the Triforce of Power could be compared to the size and energy of a planet. However, the Chaotic Realm is an entire universe, completely upheld by the power of the Chaos Entity. That is leagues greater than the power Ganondorf possessed. So it definitely had a lot more juice to give. Try thinking of the Chaotic Realm and the Triforce of Power as batteries, which fuel Dracula and Ganon's abilities. Compared to each other, Dracula would be drawing energy from something like a Nintendo car battery. Nintendo Switch, Ganon while Ganondorf would be more ad ad akin to this. I'll give you five bucks if you lick that battery. Ganondorf certainly held his own, but Dracula's more varied magic, greater regeneration, and enormous reserves of power sealed this desert warlock's fate. Of all the ways to go, that must have sucked. The big pig's chances were slim to gain none. The winner is Dracula. Looks like Dracula's having pork chops tonight. <laughs> Anyways. I hope you liked this reaction. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you thought it was good. I'm sorry that my friend Joe had to leave in the, at the beginning of the death battle itself, but eh. Sometimes life can be harsh. Anyways, I hope to see you guys when I see you guys. Make sure to check out my other videos on my YouTube channel, and as Vigata Magnemite says, die quote, and as always, toodles.